Hey there guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another Android app review. So for today's review, I wanted to share my first thoughts about YouTube Music. So um, basically for my, from what I've heard about it, it's been getting a lot of hate for the difficulties people have had in transferring their music, um, the offline functionality, YouTube Music Premium, um, and all sorts of different thoughts. So I thought I would give my initial thoughts about using the app for about it just over a day now so once you get the notification email that you can transfer your google play music library to youtube music which is my starting point i initiated that transfer for me it took um under an hour but i have heard stories about how it took a long time for people um or it didn't happen or it only hit transfer some of their music so i thought i would give it a shot see how it went um, but overall, it took less than an hour for the no confirmation notification to come in to say that the transfer was complete. So far, it seems like all the music that I have on Google Play Music transferred over fine. So um, I'm still running that test, but I want to say that I'm more than 50% certain that it's all there. I've been keeping my music on uh, shuffle just to see what pops up. And so far, it seems like all my music is there. Um, but from there, once you load the app, you get a layout kind of like this, depending on your music preferences, music that you've listened to, liked, um, bought from Google Play Music and things like that. So you'll see that I have um, a couple of playlists at to up the top, um, my favorite artists. So you can see some of the people that I listen to a lot, recommended music videos, um, artists and albums, people at the top of the charts and things like that. So overall, you get a mix of um, music and videos, um, kind of what you would expect from the name. Now, let's say you want to explore music, you can click on the um, Explore tab. Um, I disabled my internet connection for now just because it's I've been getting a lot of notifications and things that would interrupt the review. But basically, if you want to explore music, search for artists, you can search, search using YouTube and you'll get that in your search history so you can listen to music before you buy it or if you want to listen to certain artists you can do that by clicking on the library tab you can get your recently played music um, any music that you've downloaded um, you can turn on or off smart download so as you listen to music you can youtube music will download stuff for you so you'll see that i downloaded a number of my playlists so i have that available um, your playlist from google play music um, will transfer over um, but it looks like you will need an internet connection in order to view that. Um, you can view albums, so the items that you've purchased, anything that's in your history or on your local device. Um, you can view the songs that are in your library or already downloaded, so things like that. Um, from there, that's the bulk of it. I mean, it's basically a mashup of YouTube. It's YouTube proper and Google Play Music. For me, I want to say that I don't really like the UI just because it's too much going on. I prefer YouTube and YouTube Music separate just because the YouTube Music is simple. It's easy to maintain and um, view music that I want to listen to. Um, I don't really merge the two except for when I do listen to the song on YouTube and then I want to go buy it. So it's one of those things where I have an established process for myself to um, want to keep track of items that I've listen to and I now want to buy. Um, the other problem that I have is that with YouTube Music, you do need to have YouTube Music Premium or YouTube Premium in order to download songs that are in your library. So if you're on the free version, you are going to get ads and you are going to be unable to download music. So if you're on an airplane, if you have airplane mode on, if you're in a place where you have little to no reception, you're going to be unable to listen to your music, which is a definite downside. Um, as of this recording, you can get YouTube Premium for I think $11.99 for one person or $17.99 for three people. So, if you have people on your family in your family group, then that's definitely the better option. So, $12 a month for one person is kind of excessive. So that's one of those things where, for me, paying for an individual plan at $12 a month to download music to stream it seems kind of excessive and then you're out of luck once uh, Google Play Music is no longer available because you will be unable to listen to music on the plane or in a place where you have no reception or anything like that which is a big bummer. Um, 
I did sign up for YouTube Premium with the family plan to see how that goes. And overall, it is decent enough, but you run into issues like you do now. So even though um, I have um, tracks that are downloaded, um, you can I can see the pl my playlist um, in the download section. But if I go to the playlist section, it doesn't it does not show anything. So overall using it for a day now um youtube music is um okay as far as what it uh, what it offers as options you have the usual stuff to, for things like streaming on wi-fi not playing music videos or video or, um versions of the songs and things like that you can set the audio quality on your mobile network um versus Wi-Fi, um, you can set caption options um, and in advanced options if you want to see stats. Um, you can th see things like that. Um, you can also set, or one of the things I like also is let's say you want to listen to a song and you don't want the video, you can set the video quality to HD, medium, or audio only. So when you're listening, so if you want to watch a music video, but just listen to the audio because you're not really paying attention to the screen, then just set it to audio only. As far as I can tell, it should use less bandwidth, but that's by no means anything I've tested extensively. So I can't say that it does or does not. I would assume that it uses the same amount because it's still loading the video, but it's an option in there. So if you want to just see here, listen to the song rather than watch and listen, that's an option. Um, so overall i want to say youtube music doesn't feel like it's the option for me so it's one of those things where i might consider just downloading my google play music library and keeping track of my songs locally um and maintaining my playlist that way um just because i it doesn't really matter for me because for example for me on being on t-mobile i currently have an unlimited plan so listening to music and streaming it is not the problem but if i go on a trip and i want to um, download songs and i do have to have youtube premium and if it's not and it's not always going to be in my budget to have it so not being able to download songs is kind of a bummer and i also don't do not necessarily have pot enough podcasts to listen to all the time to cover a flight or um be in a position to have something to listen to all the time same thing with audiobooks i'm currently listening to war and peace but once that's done i might have an audiobook that um i may listen to that's not as long or i may not always keep audible as a service so it's one of those things where having to pay for downloading a track is seems like an unfeasible option for streaming music um in my opinion um and it might be a feature that they add um, in a future update or by the time the transfer is done because they don't want to, or Google doesn't want to have use up that bandwidth at the moment, um, or they're trying to control piracy. I don't know if that's all speculation for me, but maybe they don't want to have that option right now um, for purchased and uploaded content just because it's not something they want to implement until the migration of from Google Play Music over to YouTube Music is complete. But... For me, that would have been the better option is to allow downloading of purchased and uploaded content so that at least music that you've purchased or, or own or have stored there can be streamed regardless of the internet connection. So um, th for me, that's basically the only thing that Kasina feels um, half ha ham-handed and half-fisted or whatever that saying is. Um, so until the YouTube music service is completed, I'll kind of reserve judgment, but... Um, I do, as far as positives, I kind of like the recommendations and the streaming options. It's kind of a mix between Pandora and Apple Music. So that side of it I'm okay with. It's just the downloaded, the purchase content that I have a problem with. So overall, as of today, I'd probably give it a range of, or a grade of about 70%. It's average. It's okay. It does what they claim it's supposed to do, but it still feels like an incomplete service and they don't really account for um, offline uh, listening to music um, or the ability to listen to offline music for people who do not have that option or desire to pay for a premium service um, if they are unable or unfeasible to do so. So um, for me, that goes back to maybe just having to download my music and keep it stored locally. But for not that might not be an option for everybody as not if if you have a large music collection but a limited or limited storage on your device then um 
it might that's also not a feasible option so it's a fine line to walk but we shall see um how that plays out over the coming months and the rest of 2020 as google play is music or, or our youtube music is supposed to uh, complete its rollout by the end of the year so that's all there is for this particular review if you have any questions comments concerns or anything like that you can find me on twitter at patel n01 you can find the website patel n01.com for past episodes subscription links and all of that good stuff um but that's all there is for this review thanks for tuning in and until next time